A lot of us did not use Windows 8.1 a lot back in the day, especially when taking into account that it only had less than 20% of market share at its peak. And as I previously established, I think Windows 8.1 isn't that bad of an OS. So that leads me to the question of, can you use it as your main OS for a week? That's a good question, so let's get started. Now, I want to bring up the fact that, once again, just like with my Windows 7 for a week thing from a bit back, this is only using this version of Windows as my main OS. I can still use other versions of Windows, I can still use things like Linux, and this is only my desktop OS, so that means that if I have to, I can use Android and whatnot. I'm not going to go too much in depth about that because I already feel like it's been established. So now in all seriousness, I did do a video on Windows 8.1 recently. So what I'm going to say about Windows 8.1 here is going to be a Cliff Notes version of sorts. So if you want a bigger understanding and my opinion on why I think this OS isn't that bad, then you can watch my video on it from a bit back. Also, if I sound weird in this video, it's because I'm not feeling the best still. I apologize. But Windows 8.1 was the successor to Windows 8, and Windows 8.1 was released in 2013. It brought a lot of different features, probably one of the most prominent being the start button's return, and it was discontinued in 2023, which I made a horrible video about. So anyway, let's look at the computer that we're going to be using. I'm once again using the HP 500A60 from the previous Windows 8.1 video that I did, and this PC has an AMD A6 5200 APU at 2GHz if I remember correctly, 8GB of RAM, and a 1TB hard drive. This is probably one of the more modern computers in my collection, however I do have newer computers. Now I should mention, this computer does have a multitude of problems. For one thing, this thing has a rather toasty CPU, to put it simply. Not to mention that the hard drive is probably a more glaring thing here because it makes audible clunking noises and it gets me kind of concerned and whatnot, especially given my PTSD from Windows 7 for a week because it's not usually a good sign if a hard drive makes such a noise. Let's just put it at that. So let's get everything all set up for our thing. All right, so it is Friday, the 21st of March. I haven't formally started what I'm gonna be doing for the next week yet. That will begin on Sunday because I have formally prepared for this and whatnot. And this idea has been in my head for months. In fact, this idea actually kind of informed before even the Windows 7 for week one. So it's something that's been on my radar for quite a few months. And so I've had time to properly prepare for this. And I realized that my best opportunity right now is to do it during spring break. I think it's time that we just get this wired up and then like do our predictions and whatnot. As for my predictions as how this may go, I think that this is probably going to be relatively similar to the Windows 7 for a week thing, if you remember that, because that went, like, mostly okay. There might be, like, an issue or two, but I am a bit more experienced, despite being a scaredy cat when it comes to connecting old technology to the internet. But, I mean, I used, I connected this thing to the internet multiple times and no problems, so I don't think we should have any problems. So now, I think we should get this show on the road. Alright. I kind of intentionally woke up at noon on purpose. It's Sunday, so, like, I really have anything else to do. Alright. <clears throat> yeah, it's something to eat, and, uh, yeah, this is gonna be my main OS for the next week. Now, I know that it's only day one, however, I already have prepared a tinge, and I don't really need to be too concerned about Steam anymore because I, because it installed an update and broke, so not much of value was lost, with one exception of Bitrip Runner. But that doesn't matter all too much because, uh, if you can recall back to my Windows 7 for week video and what I did throughout that video and that week, I didn't really play games on Steam all that much, so not much of value was lost there. But I have changed the wallpaper, I've installed a couple programs that I have confirmed will work, I have upgraded Supermium, and I've also set a wallpaper on my main desktop computer that will serve as a deterrent of sorts. Hello, me from the future. What I was saying here about 
the wallpaper was pretty much useless because this deterrent wallpaper did not work for multiple reasons. The two main ones being one, it wasn't needed as I didn't turn on my monitors, which brings me to I didn't turn on my monitors. You know, there's something that I really want to get out of the way first that, you know, you know that I've had a bit of like a recurring gag in videos, right? I don't really have a lot of reasons to watch YouTube a lot on this computer since, for the record, I do not watch YouTube a lot on the desktop. I'm not going to leave too much speculation as to what I'm going to do next because I think by the fact that you're seeing my channel page here, you're probably going to get a good understanding of what I'm going to be about to do next. Could be need to be uh, all right let's count one two, no it's really hard to count uh, let's see one two three four five six seven I think we're like seven levels deep or something. I don't know. I'm gonna, if I have to, I can go call back to previous content. So, I don't know. Anyway, with these shenanigans out of the way now, I decided to go browse the web. Particularly, I was looking up the RDI Halcyon, which was an unreleased 80s gaming console that would have used Laserdisc technology. It's pretty much unobtainium, and so that's why I was curious about it, because I was curious about it before the video started, and so that's why I'm looking it up now. Alright, I suppose we should probably go exit out of this, and then disconnect from the internet. Alright, I suppose for now, one other thing I want to do, I guess we'll go play some games. When it came to the game that I decided to play, I decided to play Bejeweled 2, which I think is a really cool game. And this version of it, which is not the Steam version, doesn't have the best compatibility with newer versions of Windows, and so the screen gets a bit stretched. By the way, I played a lot of Bejeweled 2 and also some Bejeweled Twist in this video, so if you like those games, then I suppose you should get comfortable, because there's going to be a fair bit of Bejeweled 2 and Bejeweled Twist in this video. I've spent hours upon hours playing this game, so... Uh, yeah. That was ex- Yeah, right, what a- Like, that was easy. <sighs> what? That- that was so quick. Like, if I'm being honest here, like, this game and, like, the Toho games, like, Peggle, like, some of the most- are some of the most, like, common games I play on here. And there are sometimes other games, like Halo and Half-Life, but most of the time it's like, I end up playing stuff like this. We somehow didn't complete the level, now we did. Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna play a bit of this for some time. Now that I had finished playing Bejeweled 2, I still needed to get some stuff put onto the computer. Because I didn't get everything put on the computer yet! As a result of this, there were some things on my laptop that I needed to go put on here, such as some school projects and some software, including a newer version of LibreOffice and Cisco Packet Tracer. And I'm glad that I was able to find the one copy of Packet Tracer 8.1.1, which is the last version of the program that works on Windows 8.1, which was in a double-digit view count internet archive upload that was in Spanish. So, thanks. It really helped, and, and honestly, you never know when something thing could come in handy for another person. Now that I've transferred over my files, I decided to go install Packet Tracer and LibreOffice. I also then wanted to change my account picture here, but it wasn't going well at first, so then after restarting, everything was solved there. And that's generally going to summarize day one. So, when I woke up on day two, things were a bit windy outside, to put it simply. Nonetheless, this wind is not going to stop me from using the computer. I decided to install ShareX, and I then configured it so that it wouldn't be outputting in JPEG. I also checked out using Vroid Studio. However, it wasn't of any use. After that, I played Peggle and Bejeweled 2. Both were relatively fun, although Peggle seems to be a bit hard for me these days. Perhaps I'm a bit rusty at it, I'm not sure. And next up, I decided to do some graphic design. Specifically, some Frutiger Arrow-esque orbs in Paint.net. 
I will say this, for the record, I feel like this would have been much easier with the newer version of Paint.net, but that is not accessible to me in this case, so I guess we'll just live with what we have at our disposal. And that's basically it for day two. Moving on to day three, I started the day with yet more Bejeweled 2, and I think you can and I think you can tell which game is my favorite game now, followed by doing schoolwork. Because yes, I was able to get Cisco Networking Academy working properly on Supermia and whatnot. I don't know why I worded it like that, but I did this for quite a few hours, and then I decided to do two things in LibreOffice Writer. Those two things were, one, create a weekly journal, and two, create a bucket list of sorts. Now, I feel like these are probably pretty self-explanatory, however, I feel like I should explain them anyway. To put it simply, the reason why I've got a weekly journal here is because I want to keep track of everything as the week progresses, in a similar vein to Windows 7 for week, except except I made the log and updated it throughout the video. The bucket list, on the other hand, is a list of things that I want to do on my time using Windows 8 for a week. I've already done a couple things on my bucket list here, and it's okay if I don't get every single thing done, but I think you can get the point. If you've never heard of a bucket list, it's basically a number of things I want to do before it's too late to do them. I later updated the log to finish off everything for the day, and to finish the day, I decided to change a setting, allowing us to be welcomed to the um, system with the start screen, as I feel like it logically should be. Yeah, feel free to fight me, I don't really give a crap. Alright, so I noticed that the uh, desk is going like nuts. I don't know why it is going nuts over this. With this odd start to day 4 out of the way, I played some Bejeweled Twist, and the day was relatively similar to day 3, as I played games and did schoolwork. However, the later part of day four was a bit eventful for me outside of this video, and so I didn't get to log what I did for the day until the next day. So, let's get to day five. All right, we made it to day five. Oh crap, I shouldn't have left this on the internet. So, that's that. Didn't really get anything on this bucket list done yesterday. All right, so I'm gonna go do some schoolwork. After doing schoolwork, I decided to work on my website. For this, I worked on an achievements page and used my YouTube channel page for reference here, since it can be hard to track every single thing that I have done over the years. I decided to work on my website for a fairly long amount of time, and I decided to finish off day 5 with a game night, though not before logging my activities for the day. The game that I decided to play was Bejeweled 2, and unfortunately this game night that I wanted to do wasn't as illustrious as I I desire. And that brings us to day six, where the only footage I got was of me transferring photos over from my camera to the PC. You're not missing out on much regarding day six, however, because day six was relatively similar to day five. More schoolwork and more web development. There was a slight bit of coding mixed in there, but not really anything big or significant or special or anything. And so with that, we finally reached the home stretch of our vacation of sorts that being day seven. Before we start with day seven, however, I do want to provide a bit of context. With Windows 7 for a week, I used day seven to back up my data and start transitioning back to Windows 10. But if you remember, in practice, what I actually did was I chickened out midway through the day and started using Windows 10 like normal before the day was over. We're not going to do that this time. We're going to continue using Windows 8.1 as if it was our normal OS, if it was say 2013 or 2014. And then we're going to do any sort of data transferring and transitioning back to Windows 10 at the end of the day. So with that out of the way, let's get going and finish this off. To kick off the day, I decided to play some Bejeweled 2, because why not? I've played it so much at this point in this video that, you know... But after I played Bejeweled 2, I decided to go browse through the contents of a CD that I have. This CD is the companion disc for Bill Gates' original book, the road ahead. And the reason why I'm interested in putting it in this computer is because it has copies of Internet Explorer on it. So, I suppose we should get to uh, some of that right now, shall we? Yeah, we've got a bunch of different- this disc has a bunch of different things on it. Like, for example, we've got old um, pictures, but I'm gonna go IE. So we got IE2 and IE3. Yeah, we got IE3 and IE2. Like, what do you look at that? Like, NT351. 
It's so old, you got the power PC version. It says 1996 of that too. After this, I decided to do what you could argue is a study a thon of sorts. In other terms, I did a lot of schoolwork, and this took several hours. After this, it was basically the evening, and I decided that it was time to be done using the computer for the day. As a side note, usually when I'm using the computer, I'm usually using it from around sometime after I wake up and I'm at home until roughly 7 to 8 in the evening, or 19 to 20 if you use 24-hour time, and I typically use 24-hour time, though sometimes, I don't know, it's a bit complicated, so we're not going to really worry too much about it. Anyway, here is how our activities were for the week. I think it was fairly eventful, although there was some clear patterns on the things I did, which kind of says something about my life. And here is our bucket list. Looking back on it, I seem to have gotten a fair bit of things done, and I feel like I could have done a couple different things, but I'm content with what I was able to get done. So now, I decided to go transfer over all of my data, and then sign out of any important accounts, and then I decided to shut this down, and that was it. I finished. So to conclude, using Windows 8.1 as my main OS for the span of a week was relatively nice, and like Windows 7, it is still very usable. I would recommend this if you have spare time, and it doesn't have to be strictly a week, you can do something like, say, a couple days or something. Generally speaking, I've enjoyed using old technology on a fairly frequent basis. Whether it's just like something like playing Solitaire on Windows XP or something. And this week-long experience with Windows 8.1 was relatively nice and a bit of a trip down memory lane. I would argue that it would have been nicer had I had a tablet, although I don't know what happened to my old Asus Transformer Book T100, so, um, uh, uh, I would argue this was more pleasant than Windows 7 for a week, probably due to the lack of hardware failures. The only issue, I would argue, was a time where I got extremely stressed out doing schoolwork, but other than that, everything was fine. So, do you still use Windows 8.1 as your main OS? Do you use um, another older version of Windows as your main OS? Is there something I could do to improve my content? Feel free to let me know down below in the comments, and feel free to give this video a like. Anyway, with that, that's gonna be it for this video, so have a nice day!